Welcome back to my Let's Play. Um, so, in the last episode, we got uh, our initial research and things like that sorted out. Uh, we got ourselves a nice tech, we, and we started up our production. Um, just going over, and we can see that we're going to run into some issues with Venderite, Tritanium, and Uranium. Um, our projected usage is going to exceed our stockpile plus production for the year. Um, so we're going to want to uh, potentially get this taken care of. Um, maybe add some mines to the production list. The construction factor is going to be the one responsible for the geranium, I would believe. Geranium, titanium, venerite. Yeah, it's just a construction factory that's causing these. So if we slow this down to 15, and then we change... Uh, how many do we have? We've got 95, so... Let's go for 205. We set that up. Um, those mines should hopefully um, pick up the production as well. And the reduced usage will help. Um, it doesn't help the geranium because the mines will want that as well, but they're producing slowly enough that it shouldn't matter. All right, so let's start moving. Now, uh, a thing to note with increments. Um, with 30 days, okay, let's go have a look. With 30 days, all right. If you have 20 days worth of research left, right? So 1st of January, this one's going to be, be, be finished in the, on the 17th, right? So it's going to take about half a month to finish researching that thermal sensor. If I were to jump a 30-day tick, it would finish on the 17th, Although probably more on the 20th because five days, but whatever. So if I do five day ticks, I'll get I'll do four, five uh, five day increments, fifth uh, or sixth, eleventh, sixteenth, uh, and then I'll get the thermal sensor on that one. So I'll get that in 20 days with five day increments. If I want to do a 30 day increment, I'll get it in the one 30 day increment, but it'll take 30 days for that to research, and I will lose about two five-day increments or two production cycles worth of research points that could have gone into, you know, anything else, like Boat Bay or um, something else on the sensors. Like, say, for example, uh, uh, five control speed rating. We'll need five control speed rating. So we'll add that. Now, if we add that to the queue, though, then that should be fine. So we jump 30 days. There he is. Uh, so it's done the command assignments. Research complete. Sensor. Research started. Fire control speed rating. So if we go to the speed rating, see? It's 1913 compared to 2000. So the excess research was added in. So it's very important that if you're going to be using the 30 days, you make sure that you're not wasting production. That includes here and here and here so what for all your production you need to make sure that there's something queued up research is easy you have a queue industry not as easy because it'll only add stuff in uh, at the end of a five-day cycle it still kind of works but for example if you're finishing up and you need to manually add something in or you need to adjust capacities or anything might interfere with it automatically getting added in it's not going to get added in you're going to waste production and it's not gonna uh, turn out as good as you would hope so just keep that in mind um, it's very important for production that um, you do keep an eye on it uh, the other thing that's important is that um, a lot of the things that your ships do um, only gets calculated. So you'll notice the subpulse pulse is at maximum one day. So if you do 30 it might, it, it, and it does one day subpulses, it'll do 30 ticks, which means that your ship could travel a day worth of travel um, and it could end up 
you know, well inside enemy detection range or fire rate or anything like that. Um, there are interrupts that can trigger, but if the sub pulse is long enough that the Aurora uses, or if you're manually using sub pulses to try and speed up the processing, um, you could end up in a very sticky situation very easily, very quickly, um, and it might not be as easy to get yourself out again. Um, very early on, unless your computer is horrible, um, there really is no reason to use 30 days. Um, because if you have a look, when I do five days with auto turns, done, 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 done. It's seconds. It takes seconds to do five days, and it doesn't. And Thirty days really doesn't give you any major advantage. Um, it's a very, very limited advantage. And you see, trigger stops. Very easy to miss the fact that oh wait. I was researching an engine. Um, so we'll actually give him a bit of research. Uh, we'll get him on two capacitors because we will need that um, for the lasers. Um, and we'll get max engine one and five because we're going to need more power out of our engines as well. Um, who's next? Yeah, he's got plenty of Q, sensors and fire rating, fire control. What are we doing with her? Beam fire control range. Yes, we're going to need that. Put that in. Uh, and e oh, energy weapons. Here we go. What do we have for energy weapons? Oh, we have the visible light laser. That's fine. But now that we have the engine, we can start on this. So we'll throw in the sensor. And we'll throw on the drive. And what do we have? We have a really nice speed. We need to fix the maintenance life, but that will come. 37 billion kilometers. That's not that great, to be honest. So 37 billion kilometers is... About there, right? So it sounds, it seems like a lot, but ideally, we want a bit more. So, especially because you only get 131 days worth of actual running time, and we want it to run for four years. So we're going to give it more fuel. <clears throat> Look at that, 200 billion kilometers. And we have 700 days, which is two years worth of fuel full power. It's not going to spend its entire four-year run burning um, engines full bore. So that is perfectly acceptable. Um, now, it is a military ship, so we do have maintenance to worry about. So we do want to get its deployment time up. And we do that through engineering spaces. Engineering spaces reduce your failure rate, which increases your maintenance life. And maintenance storage bay adds total uh, maintenance supplies. So by reducing your failure rate, you reduce how many supplies, how often you need to use supplies. And by having smaller components, you reduce the amount of supplies that you spend if that component breaks. And by having uh, maintenance storage base, you can deal with higher failure rates because you'll have enough maintenance supplies to fix whatever breaks. Even though it breaks more often, you'll have the supplies to fix it. So engineering spaces are going to be our way to go. So we've got three kilometers a second, which is very nice. We've got 200 billion kilometers range, which is also very nice. We've got a single engine, which is problematic if we get shot at but hopefully we won't have to and we have a little sensor to see uh, if anything is trying to sneak up on us um so let's think about design for a bit so we got 5,000 ton ship right if we stick another engine on there that brings it up to 7600 uh which means that we need a larger um shipyard right so as it's as it stands we have a 9,000 and a 7,000 7, ton shipyard. As it is, either one of these two can build our Canberra class exploration ship. If I stick another engine in there, 7,600. 
right? That means only Lyons and Newton Steel is able to actually build a camera. Not only that, maintenance life has plummeted, and our range has been almost cut in half. The speed we gain is only a third. Do that from 3,000 to 3,947. So in this case, because so much of the ship, of the actual ship, is engine, here it is, here it is. half the ship is engine. So by adding another engine on top, we're just pushing engine. It's engine pushing engine. So you really lose so much efficiency by sticking a lot, a multiple big engines on very small ships. There really is no reason at all to have more engines. So for the Canberra, we're gonna we're happy with our five thousand tons. We're happy with our speed. We're happy with maintenance stuff. We're happy with the range. Um, I'm actually gonna stick another one to get off the port. There we go. So very happy. Three thousand. 200 billion kilometers. Uh, this is overall a very nice ship. So, this is what we're going to go by. Um, our thermal emissions is also nice and low. It's only 300, so it's very nice. Um, as you can see, so a strength 1000 with a sensitivity of 10 would be part of 10 million kilometers. So, at 300, a sensitivity 10 sensor is going to be able to spot it and maybe like. 3 million kilometers, so most enemy ships are probably going to be about uh, 2,000 strength, so we'll be able to see things a nice distance out, and hopefully um, anything fast enough is going to have engines powerful enough that we're going to see it far away enough that we can still do something about it. Uh, maybe not much, but you know. Here comes the problem. 5,000 tons is nice for a ship, but this thing needs to be able to go places, not necessarily in Seoul. That means we need a jump drive. And this is where we might potentially need that second engine. So if we, if we, um, we'll go to, go to Google, go, if we go to my Google Drive, jump drive calculator. I've got a, uh, I've got a jump drive calculator built. Um, this is available on the Reddit, uh, uh, wiki guide list. Um, all you need to do is stick in your technologies that you're designing for your jump drive and it will tell you how much ship mass you can actually push around. So this is from a previous game so we'll go and minimize that so we have to see. So that's our ship. We'll go to design tech, we'll go to jump drive or jump engine, and um, let's see what we need. So we need, so we have efficiency of four, a squad size of three, and a radius of fifty. So we need five thousand. So we'll go for that. Fifty is too big. Forty is looking good. 36 sounds all right. What about 35? No, that's small. 36. So 36 will be able to push a 5,000 5, ton ship around just fine. Uh, and that will make our ship approximately 7,200 because uh, all it does is it takes um, the mat, the jumps, the size, the maximum jump size from the j drive mass and gives you the ship mass. So, now, here is where we need to be careful. Uh, we need to know whether we need the engines. So, we need to know how the ship will react when it gets um, to, when it gets 1,800 tons worth of uh, jump drive, right? So, what we need to do is we need to get 1,800 tons worth of junk. So... Cryo transports are usually are pretty good, so 1800. So we'll get four of these. It's important that when you do this, you use junk mass. You don't want to use fuel tanks or engines. Anything that changes your engine power or range, um, you basically can't use. Uh, because if you do, it's going to throw off your calculations. So 
uh, where were we? So we got four cryotransports, so that's a thousand tons, and we need another 800. So we'll do an ICBM launch control, that's 500. That means we need 300 more. Um, here we go. No, can't use fuel storage. Uh, we need 300 more. We'll do a small cryo and an emergency cryo. There we go. So that's seventeen. That's eighteen hundred tons worth of junk mass. So what? Where does that ship? Where does that leave us? That leaves us at two thousand one hundred seventy-three kilometers a second, which is still reasonable. It's still reasonable, and a fuel capacity of a range of one hundred and fifty billion kilometers, which is once again still reasonable. So let's see what happens when you add the energy now. Gets it up to three thousand. At a range of 106. Okay, not bad. But now our ship is 9,550, which means we need a larger jump drive. So, at the moment, right, at the moment, it's probably not very important. Because if you have a look, maintenance life is dropping, so we're going to need more maintenance. And range is dropping, so we're going to need more fuel. So, this is just it's basically just going to snowball. So, if we try and make it faster, or give it a little bit extra, give it extra range, or significant amount of extra range, it's just going to snowball, and we're going to end up with a 15,000 ton ship, and then we're going to need shipyards expansions, and it's not going to do any good. As it is with the extra engine, we're already over our ship, we're already over our shipyard, so we don't want to have to upgrade the shipyard, so out it goes. What we can do, though, is patch up the maintenance life, get it back up to four years, and maybe add a little bit of extra range. So, uh, we'll stick another two of these, and another one of these. There we go. 7,100. Is that still acceptable? Yes, it is. Um, we can probably get away with one of these and one of these. So, 2,000, four years, four years, 200 billion kilometers, 7,200 still acceptable um and the best part is that we can still remove a little bit of fuel if it turns out to be too much so yeah so what we do now is we take that and that and that and that and that and that all the junk that we added on and we strip it off and that leaves us with our ship which is a little bit much but did i miss something yeah, armor is going to be a potential issue, so we might have to strip some stuff out. Um, <clears throat> alternatively, three nine six. Yeah, that'll look. So, with with a little bit of calculation and with a little bit of testing, you can figure out exactly how your ship is going to react, and that is very important for when you're creating a ship. Um, especially when your technology might not be as good as um, one would hope. So um, all that is going to get even more complicated once you start working with uh, more complex engines, more complex designs. But um, yeah, for now, that will do. This is a pretty, this is a very, very nice um, uh, ion uh, tech ship. So yeah, we'll do that. Uh, now, it's going to be a military. Of course, we're looking at the military. So, what do we need? We need 38. 38. There we are. 38 military jump drive. We'll confirm it's correct. 7,600. Yeah, perfect. And we'll name it the... Camera jump drive... 7600 there we go and it's going to take 1740 research points but we we'll just have to we we'll just have to deal with that okay so now we need some labs jump drive is in power propulsion so we'll actually ditch that we'll grab a power guy and we'll give him our five labs for that. Um, we'll strip... S oh, no, he can't work with it anyway. So, whatever. Okay. So, how long is that going to be? That's going to be on 15th of February next year. 
That's not very good. Let's get it done sooner. One done ASAP. So we're going to strip out all these labs. And we're going to give them to Joshua. And you're thinking, wait, he's a biology guy. He's not going to get the four times bonus. Well, yes, that is true. But if you think about it, Joseph has a bonus of 10 and he can do five labs. So at 320 each, five labs, um, you're looking at about 15, 1600 research points um, with a 10% bonus that's uh, less than 2000 points. Whereas this guy, he can do 2,400, 24 times 30, 320, which is going to be over 3,000 points. So he's going to be able to get it done a lot faster, even though he's not specialized. So there you go, 83. He's going to get it done in July of this year. So it's May at the moment, June, July, two months, bam, done. And we can start producing our um, jump capable explorer. Um, so let's get that taken care of. Let's go have a look at our production. How are we doing? Sector commanders on the way. Shipyard. Yep, yep. All that's looking nice. Um, we're just going to re quickly review a shipyard. So 8,800 tons on the commercial is nice. Um, that will be sufficient. This one, I'd um, like to get up to 10,000 because 10,000 is a nice, easy number for. Uh, military ships, especially with this and this one as well. Um, throw another thousand tons on there. This one, I don't care too much about it because it's a tiny one. Um, but there's a couple of inter very interesting designs that have come up on the uh, Reddit for over the last couple of days. So I'm, I'd like to try some of those sometime soon. So we'll throw on two thousand tons because five thousand will be enough for that. Um, I might actually round that off to a nice even ninety thousand. So we've got some production. That's underway nicely. We're going to run into a mineral crunch soon, but it'll do. we got mines producing, so that's fine. All right. Let's keep going. So everything's spinning. Um, I believe I mentioned this, but the main reason why asteroids are off is because by making them spin, you're just going to slow down your game sooner. So that's all off. All right, so yeah, as you can see, commercial shipyards, they add mass and capacity extremely quickly. Um, these guys are now 15% done. This thing's already taken care of. So very, very quick. Keep going. It's time, 22, still a few minutes. There we go, jump drive's done. So we'll give Kate back her 10 labs. We will give Joseph back his capacitor rate research. Patrick still has his three. There we go. That's nice. Keep going. Um, yeah, with, with the with the events, you can see here exactly how how much of a cycle has come through. So um, this can come in handy if it feels like things have slowed down to see exactly how much have slowed down. Uh, um, oh wait, we finished the jump drive. Let's bolt it on. There we go. 7550, 7600. We still got 50 tons, but that will be fine. 200 billion range. Maintenance life. There we go. 4.2. 21 billion. Just under 2000 kilometers. Planning of maintenance. Everything looks lovely. Let's get it built. Now. She was over 6,000, so we can't tool this one. We can tool her on here. Now, under normal circumstances, if a, sh if a shipyard already has a class assigned, retooling is going to cost you build points and materials. But, but 
for brand new shipyards that have never had a class assigned, the tooling is instant. Um, if, it, if, it, if you have to retool it, you can't retool it while it's upgrading. But for the first tooling, it's instant. It doesn't override this, and we can do it right now. So, done. Um, that error message was telling you that something's in progress. It would have been a problem if, like I said, if it was uh, if it needed to be retooled, but it doesn't. So we'll just get it on the way. Um, we'll actually get we'll actually give it a name profile. We'll give it a name profile. Here we are, and we're going to call it after astronomers. There we go. Explorers of the sky of the stars. Exploring again. And as you can see, it's automatically pulling names off the list. Now, here's where it gets interesting, right? It's going to take 1,100 build points for this one to build um, a Canberra ship. Um, and its mod rate is 862, so it's going to take a bit more than a year. However, Almost half the en uh, half of the ship is the engine and the jump drive, right? So what we can do ship components. I want a few of these, so we'll put three of these and three of these, and we're going to pull all, all of these out of production. We're going to put these into production. But this one can have 33%. This one can have 67%. So it's about a 3 to 1. And bump it in the queue. There you go. 10th to 5th of October. So it's currently September. It's going to take just, just over a month for... Uh, planetary production to build these engines, right? But this is half the build points of the entire ship. So by taking a month to build these engines, we will shave half the cost in build time for the ship, which means we will, we will be able to get it um, off the yard in a much shorter time. And we don't even have to wait for the full month because the full month is for three of each to get built. All we have to do is wait a few cycles for one of these to be built, so it's in the stockpile, and then we can start work on the ship. And you'll see how much faster it is. Um, we've actually got two shipyards, so I'm going to show you exactly how much faster. I'm going to start producing the Mac Aronson now. All right. So this is going to be producing using purely the shipyard's build rate of 776. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for one of these to finish, and then I'm going to use that stored component to build the George Ogden Abel. I'm going to load the George. Um, and you'll see exactly how much faster producing half the ship beforehand can make the, the assembly of the ship um, in the shipyard. Uh, what's our time at? 28. We'll wrap it up in a sec. Um, in the meantime, we've got visible laser, so we'll get um, keep working on laser tech. 15 centimeter laser. We want to get that up nice and high so we can get some good kick out of our, of our laser guns. Um, yeah, that's good. So, the five day, five day, five day. There we go. We've got one of each engine, 2.9% done. Start work on the George. Engines have been picked up by the shipyard. And watch this, same build rate. Let's see the completion date. 4th of February, 2027, 23rd October, 2026. That's about half a year. That's half a year that we've saved in less than a month, in 10, 15 days of, by building the engines here. 
compared to here. That's pretty impressive. And that's the end of this episode. So we will continue on uh, in a bit.